Today, we're gonna talk story. A little while back, my friend asked if I wanted to take two sheep. And I said, of course, why not? They could come to my little half acre food forest here and mow down the grass so I wouldn't have to mow anymore. They could fertilize the garden. Maybe if we're lucky, we could get some milk out of it. At least my kids will get some sort of learning experience raising sheep. So I thought, why not? Let's bring them on over. Did it work out the way that I planned? Or did it end up being a disaster? Sheep were first introduced here in Hawaii way back when in 1791 by Captain George Vancouver. He brought over an assortment of livestock, including cows and sheep and goats, and gifted them to Kamehameha, who then allowed them to roam free for 10 years so that they can establish their numbers. Unfortunately, this uh, well-meaning gesture to provide food for the people of Hawaii kind of backfired. The animals after 10 years started to run rampant and uh, so they had to get special help to be able to manage these animals. But to this day, there are still wild cows and sheep and goats roaming around the islands. They cause pretty severe damage to the landscape. They eat native plants, destroying food and, and habitat for uh, local native birds. And with them, they bring uh, non-native plants that are invasive and tend to be prone to fire. And all of this damage has led the government to enact programs to eradicate these animals. A lot of times they'll shoot them down from helicopters and leave the corpses to rot in the field, putting them at odds with sustainable hunters who are just looking to provide food for them and their family. But a balance has to be met, right? We cannot have these animals that are non-native to Hawaii destroying the environment, but we also need a sustainable food source for the people of Hawaii. Now, many people in Hawaii raise sheep on grass. Pasture is plentiful in Hawaii. It rains all the time and grass constantly grows. So sheep always have forage to eat. And lucky for us, they're able to turn that grass into food that we can eat, into food that we can eat in the form of meat. I hate to break it to you all out there, but animals are a vital part of the food system. But do animals like sheep and cows and goats belong in Hawaii? Pasture didn't exist before these animals showed up. Before the livestock were here, the hills were covered in trees and native songbirds. Water was flowing in more places than it does now. Soil was held on the island instead of washed away into the sea. But now we have pasture and we consider that normal. Our baselines have shifted. But is it normal to be raising these animals in that way? My little experiment raising sheep on a half acre food forest gave me a little insights on some of those questions. But before I get into some of those insights, you know what to do. Plant that finger on the like button real quick. It really helps. All right, let's go. So I like sheep so much that I brought home two young baby sheep over eight months ago in October of 2021. One was a male St. Croix Barbados cross mix and the other was a wild mouflon female. I was so excited to have these little grass grazers around. The thought of not having to mow the lawn anymore or weed whacking was the main reason I wanted to have these guys show up. If you live in East Hawaii, you know what I mean. It is a chore keeping that grass down. It grows overnight out here. So when they first got here, I put them in a little enclosure that I made for them where they had a house and where I fed them a little a bit of sweet treats so they can get used to it as their home and their safe space. And every night we would put them back into this place. But during the day, they were allowed free range on my half acre food forest. And I figured since I had sheep, they were gonna go straight for the grass. Well, I was partially right about that. They went straight for the guinea grass, which I hate, but then they started to grow straight for my sweet potato and my katuk and my pineapples out of all things. Pretty much anything within the reach of their mouth, they ate. There were a few plants like wild ginger that they didn't eat, which I would have been happy they would have ate, but Everything else that they seemed to um, like was something that I liked too. I was pretty surprised because I've always known sheep to be, you know, grass eaters. You always see sheep out in large pastures without any trees or any other plants, but grass. And I had a great source of pasture here in my place. I have a variety of grass growing in my lawn here. It's not just one type of grass, but it's like the last thing they went for. They went for the tea leaves and the sweet potatoes and the small young leaves of all my trees. They went for all of that stuff and it never seemed like they were ever interested in the grass. So now my food forest is pretty weed free, but most of my understory is also gone. 
I didn't have to break out the weed whacker with the sheep around, but the mower still came out as much as usual. So long story short, the sheep have since moved on. My place was too small and the plants just couldn't regenerate quickly enough. But it did give me ideas on how we could raise them in a way that they have enough food that they want to eat and so that the plants could regenerate so that there's a constant supply for them. Because do sheep even like grass? Or is that just what they eat because that's what they're given? Because from what I've observed, grass would be the last thing they want to eat. So perhaps a better system for these animals would be a more of a mixed system known as a silvopasture. You can plant a mix of fruit trees, fodder species, nitrogen fixing species, um, trees, plants and shrubs, uh, all in a rows or in clumps within uh, areas of large grassy pasture so the sheep can have a variety of food to consume. And having these mixed hedge rows of uh, fruit trees, nut trees, and nitrogen fixing trees, you not only produce uh, another surplus for yourself, you produce healthier animals that are, uh, need less medical care, uh, you produce a more valued meat, and you uh, also help heal the Ina. The trees hold the soil in place. They allow the uh, rain to continue to fall. They allow the ecosystem to regenerate and grow and not be exploited anymore. You create a biodiversity that is not there in the traditional pasture system. So with how much I saw sheep eat, if you have a rich and varied area of uh, mixed plantings with pasture, you could probably get uh, two to four sheep per acre, rotating them regularly on little quarter to one eighth acre little segments within that acre, you could allow the plants to regenerate before the sheep come back to eat them again. So sheep have a long history here in Hawaii. Their history was pretty short here on my property, but here in the islands, they've been here a long time. We can live in harmony with these animals in the way that provides food for them and helps regenerate the aina. It was a fun experiment raising sheep on my little homestead, but I'm gonna stick to chickens. They're a lot easier to manage and they don't eat as much as sheep do. But if sheep are for you, consider yourself blessed. Sheep are awesome animals. As I had them here for the past few months on my property, I was able to closely observe them and they have a great personality. They could be really friendly if you train them young and uh, they could be a really great asset to any homestead. Now that was just my story about sheep and how they were on my half acre homestead here. A lot of you out there have sheep of your own and I'd love to hear more about what it's like for you raising sheep. So leave a comment and let me know. Do they eat everything in sight at your place? Or do they stick to just the grass? I'd love to know because that was a surprise to me. As always, I appreciate you watching me make these videos. Until next time, ahoy ho.